So I had some friends with Mach 1s. In the other video I mentioned that there were over 20 Mach 1s in this town at one time. And it was neat to see them around and get to know people who were friends with the cars and go do things together. And one of those Mach 1s was this white 2003 Oxford White Mach 1. It actually belonged to a friend who moved here with the car from the Midwest and he ended up selling the car. He had a GT and a Mach 1 at the same time and for whatever reason he sold the Mach 1. It was just something he needed to do and slim down his cars and because he was kind of traveling back and forth across the country. And funny enough he was willing to sell this white Mach 1 I would think that he would have done everything to hold on to the Mach 1 and sold the GT instead, but he had picked it up from a friend and it had a long history and even that would be a reason I would think he'd want to hold on to it more. But regardless, he sold it to another friend of mine who had a red Mach 1 at the time and a black bullet and some other cars. So my friend bought it and then basically uh, bought it for his girlfriend so that she would have it to drive around. So we had a pretty cool car club around here and we'd drive these cars all around. And I did make a story about this white Mach 1. I'll put it in the description. The car had over 200,000 miles on it, so that's pretty cool. But we would meet up like on this night with all of our muscle car friends, Mustangs mostly, and we would drive down to Las Vegas to go watch the races together. And these pictures are so important to me. I love this picture of my Mach 1 and their Mach 1 cruising down the road. This is a great capture of enjoying a muscle car or enjoying any car for anybody who loves their car. This is what the cars are about. Cruising down the road together, having fun, enjoying time together. The cars look fantastic. You have the red glow of the taillights and the rumble of the V8 cruising down the highway. Perfect sunset, nice temperature, wheels spinning. We're headed somewhere fun. This is the enjoyment that I think people miss out on when they decide to part these cars out. When people will sell these cars and sell them for parts, even if they get wrecked or they develop a rod knock or you know have the engine go, and people decide to get rid of a car, this is what they are throwing away. They are throwing away so much more than just a car, in my opinion. It's hard to put it into words when I make the videos about the cars that get parted out and stuff. You can tell I'm very adamant about not doing that with these cars. And the people who do part these cars out to make a quick buck are throwing this opportunity away from future people enjoying these cars. It's very destructive and wasteful when the car can be saved and they'd rather be lazy and greedy and wasteful. Even though parting out a car's work, it's a lot easier to just sell the parts off of it and throw it away. And a lot of people who do that as well don't have a lot of money to fix it and so instead of selling it to somebody who can fix it and pay for a new engine and get it back on the road, they'd rather just destroy it. And I know that sometimes those people don't get this part of the enjoyment of these cars and I feel bad for those people because they will not enjoy something like I enjoy this and like my friends enjoy this. I know I'm not alone in this because in the comments of the videos I make about these cars getting parted out when they could be saved, I mean I'm not talking about cars that are completely wrapped around a pole and that are not safe on the road anymore and you know completely rusted through the bottom and you can't fix, that's different. What I'm talking about is when people destroy these cars, um, they are throwing away this type of opportunity. This is like a snapshot of the American dream in my opinion of cruising, enjoying, loving the cars but what I was saying is I know I'm not alone in this because in the comments so many people say the same thing that I'm saying right now so many people say I can't believe somebody would throw away such a car this is what I'm talking about I made a story recently about this zinc yellow Mach 1 it was a nice car it was straight it might have had accident history or something, but it was all there and it was straight. The only problem was the engine had a tapping noise or something in it, probably a spun bearing. But nice, complete Mach 1, definitely worth saving. Nice interior, rare and valuable car. And the person who had this car bought it to part it out. And this is what they did to it. Just totally destroyed it 
and turned it into a shell and they're just going to keep selling the parts off of it. And so that makes me very upset if you can't tell. I've already done a story about that car and what a waste that was because this is what I see the car as. That Mach 1 could be right here with these other Mach 1s cruising down the road owned by somebody who loves, enjoys, and appreciates what it is. And so that's why I have such a hard time with these part out cars when people are doing it just to make a quick buck when the car could have been fixed because I love my cars so much, my friends love them so much, and we are very passionate about enjoying these cars, preserving them, and having fun with them. And so this was a great night. This is what I think of uh, what people are missing out on when they get rid of these cars. So that's a little bit of a rant about these part out cars because you can tell that makes me upset and I think people don't understand what these cars mean to the rest of us and I feel bad that those people will never enjoy anything like this. Here we were cruising down the highway having a great time. The sunset was fantastic. There's no way you could capture it in a picture. I tried. These are some of the pictures of the sunset. It was just awesome. We'd go to 7-Eleven, get a Slurpee, head over to the races, had a great time that night. It was really fun to be together and do this. And I do this a lot. You'll see another uh, trip down there in a minute here with the Mach 1. So then another day I decided to take the Mach 1 out for a drive. My wife was at work or school or something and I had the little boys with me and we went for a cruise and drove around up to this water tower. This is a place called Turkey Farm Road. I like that old speed limit sign. I thought it made a good picture with the Mach 1 next to it. That sign is so far out here that nobody really sees it and that's probably why it's never been repaired. But Nice road. It's kind of a cruddy road but a nice place to drive around. Uh, I got to the end of it and I had to jam on the brakes because it turned to gravel and I didn't want to drive the car on the gravel. I've never driven my cars off-road, my Mustangs, they've never seen dirt. And so I had to get on the brakes and stop because the road just kind of went to nowhere. But nice scenery up here, kind of on top of a mesa, very beautiful place. Took the car out with the family. A lot of times we would just put the boys in the back and my wife and I would go drive around. We'd go to stores together. Like the shot of the Bullet and the Mach 1 with both their deep dish wheels in the back. Like in the previous video, I just got these deep dish rear Mach 1 wheels, so it was fun to go out and take pictures and go places. This is near my parents' and my grandpa's old house, so it was fun to go there. They actually lived up a dirt road. It was my grandpa's house before, and this is the view that it had. This is part of the view. This is down below on the asphalt. But I would take the Mach 1 with my family if we'd go visit my parents or my grandpa. We would stop and park at the bottom of the road and we'd walk up the hill or my parents would come down on the Suburban and pick us up or my grandpa on his truck or whatever. So that's why I have these pictures here and it was a beautiful view, a good place to go but um, the Mach 1 would stay down here on the asphalt. This is the street I grew up on. We would go visit my parents at that house back when they lived there and the Mach 1 was at this stage. And these diamonds are something fun to come across. My wife and I like these diamonds and it's something like an inside joke to us because when we went on our first date down to Las Vegas to a wedding for her side of the family, this was before phones, it was before um, GPS, it was before anything like that that was readily available. I mean some people probably had GPS and stuff but we didn't and we got lost and we had to buy a map at a gas station and we were driving around and it seemed like every road we thought we were supposed to be on as we were going through the suburbs and the neighborhood housing and everything in Vegas and the, the little beltways and stuff it seemed like every road that we thought we were supposed to be on went to a dead end with these red diamonds. The red diamonds mean end of the road. <laughs> so we always laugh about it and we talk about the red diamonds. So when my wife and I would go driving around and we see the red diamonds we had to stop and take a picture. And so this spot here is actually really nice. It's very open. It's the end of a big road in a subdivision where all the retired people live in the town and it's a very nice quiet place. 
and my friend and I would do mobile detailing. He had a mobile detail business and I'd help him out on the side. And this is where he would have the people bring their RVs to wash and wax and detail them. And so it was a lot of work and I would be here a long time throughout the day with him working and then I'd just want to get the Mach 1 and come back after a long day of work and working my other job too. So it was a lot of hours and I just wanted to get my Mach 1 and come back and park it there in that nice area because it was open, it was quiet, it was really peaceful. So we'd find some more new roads that they're about to build, nice new pavement, nice place to go drive around. You can see my wife in there and the boys are in the back and out by the new airport, really cool road to go on. And then we would go to Nielsen's to get frozen custard, it's very good. And so my brother met us there with his Mach 1 and that was really fun to get the cars together and go for a cruise with the Mach 1s and we went down the new highway that goes to the new airport and so that was really fun. Nice place to go, wide open roads, hear the Mach 1s rumbling down the road together, just fun to cruise together, something that we like to do a lot. And uh, Speaking of going out and taking pictures and driving around, there was a really nice place in town, it's on the other side of town, where I like to go for pictures, and this is where it is, beautiful red rocks. And so we cruised out there, this is my friend's white Terminator, and I had taken the Blue Mach 1, so this was a little trip we took out to that side of town and we wanted to go out there and have a little photo shoot and so again this is somewhere I had been with my friend doing some detailing for some customers out here there are some homes out here that are very nice and very expensive and they're very uh, spread out so this is a nice place to go cruise around and while I was out there I said I want to come back here and take some pictures so we got the cars together and uh, we went out there and had a great time so you can see this beautiful uh, new roads and the the landscaping out here is fantastic and the beautiful red cliffs are phenomenal this is just an awesome place to go and if you had heard in my other videos about the bullet I actually brought the bullet out here as well to take photo shoots and stuff and so this area is very important to me especially because I had sold the bullet and then when I looked back on the pictures out here I really wanted to get the bullet back and I did get the bullet back and so now those pictures are nice to look at again but here is the blue Mach 1 out here beautiful area it's nice to be out here when the weather's nice when it's warm and not too cold or freezing or whatever it doesn't get too cold here but it does make it unpleasant so these are the good times to go out and hang out and drive around and enjoy and again I had been out here with my friend working and so it just made me want to get my car and come back and enjoy being with the car out there and um, taking pictures because taking pictures out here at golden hour was really nice and it's something that you can do to come out and enjoy being somewhere it's something to do while you're out there it's fun to cruise out there and hang out and talk but it's also fun to take pictures because that's uh, something that I enjoy and a lot of people enjoy taking pictures of their cars a lot of people uh, that's the main thing they do with their car and I can see why it's fun it's a hobby and in a very photogenic area here with a beautiful car with uh, colors that complement each other and they're pretty wild I think it looks great so these are some more pictures uh, taken with the nicer camera that I have and you know I didn't know if they would come out any better than the iPhone pictures but they did and they they look really good I think they captured the color of the Mach 1 very well that Azure Blue can look different colors depending on what camera they're taken on the pictures are taken on so love these red cliffs just so cool but one of the things I don't like about these pictures is that the car is not how it looks now and we'll get into that later but the car was not lowered so the problem is I look back at these pictures and I love the pictures but I don't like that the car is still on the stock ride height because I really love the way it looks now so it was fun cruising out there together finding new spots new cul-de-sacs where people have made the land ready for homes but nobody's built out there yet and nice canyon drives the loud V8 echoing off the hills 
just cruising around and turning around and driving around and you know stepping on it a little bit and having fun it's what these cars are about it's just really fun to come out here but yeah the car was not how I wanted it exactly and so I look back at these pictures and they're cool but they don't really look how I like the car to look and so it kind of ruins the pictures so I guess the only thing to do in that case is go back and take more pictures now that the car is different and that's always an opportunity on one hand you take all these pictures and you go home and you enjoy them and then on the other hand you don't capture exactly what you wanted to see and it doesn't tell the story exactly what it was like being there so that's one thing about being there you need to really enjoy going places and not worrying so much about taking the pictures but then on the other hand if you can get some good pictures out of it then that's a good thing too so I like these and I think uh, if anything the greatest thing about taking all these pictures is now I have them to put in the video and I can share it with other people and enjoy them because a lot of pictures do get taken and then never looked at again but I think this did pretty well and I tried to catch the golden hour and the nice shadows and everything especially the interior it looked so good in person but it was hard to capture that in a picture this is a good picture to show my shift light setup if you remember I moved the shift light from the top of the steering column when I bought the car it, that's where it was down here by my feet and I think that's really fun and you can see in this picture really well because I don't have a lot of pictures of that and it does work really well at night it lights up your whole feet when you take it up towards red line and that shift light glows and so it worked well but you can see it in this picture very well that was a fun cruise and we would always get an icy called cotton candy chaos it was really fun really something that we did as friends and we always joked about so that was fun to get the terminator and the mock one out so i bought these caps they're actually chair bottom caps i got them at ace hardware and I think they're one inch caps, but they fit on the windshield wiper arms pretty well, so that worked nice. If you look at this picture, my uh, friend had his white Cobra in my garage, and we were taking the Terminator and the Mach 1 out for a little repair work to be done on the Cobra. I'll talk about that in the Cobra's video when I make the series of that car, which are coming up. But we did drive that out there together, and then we took the Mach 1 for a nice drive, and went to the park where my kids could play and stuff and so car hit 80,000 miles and so that was a good milestone for this car like I said I would bought it with 75,000 so still looking great here's a little idle clip and so that leads us into our trip down to the racetrack again my wife and I took the Blue Mach 1 and we went through this beautiful area here called the Gorge. This is on the way between Utah and Vegas and a beautiful place. I have a lot of footage driving the cars through there. And so, very nice place to go and enjoy. I had to stop on the off-ramp and get a picture of how nice the car looked and just how fun of an evening it was. We got out of the Gorge and uh, as we were headed down the highway, I just kept getting out and taking pictures of the Mach 1 on the side of the road because the landscape down there is a little more different than it is up here, a little more desert, kind of cool to see. Uh, and this is a nice little place called Mesquite, Nevada. I really like the mountain range in the background there. Very beautiful place to go, very desert. It's a small town, but it, there are a lot of people who retire here, and there's some casinos and things, so that brings people to the town. But it's like they call it what Vegas used to be. That's what they advertise Mesquite to be. It's a nice smaller town the way it used to be a long time ago before Vegas got so big. And it's a fun town to go to because it seems like there's always some muscle cars down here. I had some good friends from down here in the previous videos the Mach 1 doing some back road racing it was a lot of people who were from this town were meeting up with me there and so really fun to go down there there was a green bullet in this town that was purchased brand new by a kid in high school and I was so young at the time I couldn't afford one so I was jealous that he had a bullet and he would run drugs in it and stuff and so uh, that's the story I got so it made me kind of jealous and upset that you know, I wasn't doing those bad things, but he was being rewarded for doing the bad things. But that's just a lesson in life. That you do your best and you don't 
compare yourself to other people and you don't judge other people and you try to help other people if you can. That green bullet actually ended up in my town once and it was sitting on four jack stands and the engine was ruined on it and uh, it was a kind of a cool story. I don't have any pictures of the car otherwise I would have made a story about it but it had a big CB on the trunk and that's part of how I recognized it when it showed up in my town when it was receiving a new engine and I talked to the guy and he affirmed it was the same car and I, I knew it was the same car just because but anyway um, I was here in this town one night because my sister had her wedding reception down here she had two receptions but her husband's side of the family was from this town and so they were down here for their wedding reception my family came and my brother and I were hanging out and that's when we saw the bullet go by with the CB and we were just right in a parking lot. It drove right past us, and we were going bowling that night in one of the casinos with my sister's sister-in-law, who would have been my age and my brother's age. And so when that bullet went by, my brother and I were shocked to see it because they were brand new, and we couldn't believe that a, a high school age kid had a brand new bullet. And she said, oh yeah, that's so-and-so, he runs drugs in the car, that's why he has it, that's why the CB's on the trunk. And So that's why whenever I pass through this town of Mesquite, I'm always looking off the side of the freeway there for a green bullet, wondering if it's there or where it is and stuff, because it meant a lot to me back then. It was brand new, it was something that I couldn't have. And So I really like this town for that. It just reminds me of that bullet Mustang and the stories. And, you know, I'd cruise down here with my friends in high school and we cruised the streets because it had really nice wide streets and they have a really cool car show here every year and I have videos of that car show on the YouTube channel uh, but I'll go this year I'm sure it's something I look forward to they always have it right after Christmas and so when the holiday fun is all over and you're kind of on those post Christmas blues it's fun to know that there's a car show in January to go to to enjoy it in this nice town so we got back on the road and I got back off at one of the off ramps because there is this frontage road right next to the interstate and it was such a perfect night. I wanted to get out and try to capture how it looked. I love when you can see the distance and the sky changing on a nice summer night. You see the colors change from kind of a blue to a purple to a pink to an orange. It just looks so cool out there beautiful uh, sky and uh, it's hard to capture in pictures but it looked so good that I just had to get off at the next off ramp and get a picture of the car on this nice evening the sun's gone down but it's still really bright out and it's gonna stay bright out for an hour or so like that and this is my favorite time to drive not harsh with the sunlight and you know no sun in your eyes just a perfect time to go driving down the road and so I took those pictures and then it started to get dark and uh, took a couple more pictures and it just looked really good so we got back on the interstate and headed back down towards Vegas and we arrived and when you get there you can choose to have your car inspected just like everyone who races does and you could go in and either race or you could put your car in what they call the car show but basically it was just parking right next to the track where it's kind of like a car show and people can hang out there but for me I wanted to do that so that I could keep an eye on the car and in this picture you can see I'm there taking pictures of everything and I was keeping an eye on the Mach 1. It was right behind and below from the grandstand so I could go up there and take pictures of the Mach 1. But the first Mustang I saw when we pulled in was this Azure Blue Mach 1 and this car is really cool. I like this Mach 1 a lot. It's low mileage. I've talked to the guy before and I recognized it as the Mach 1 that here in Vegas has run 1098 at 124. It might have done better than that but it's naturally aspirated 10 second Mach 1 so really cool to see that car again and talk to the owner and he was really nice he was a great guy to talk to he saw my blue Mach 1 come through and he said your Mach 1 looked great I love those AFS wheels on the back so that was really cool that he recognized my car knew what it was and I looked at his and knew what his was and, and we got along because sometimes you go and talk to people in the staging lanes and they're busy and they don't want to talk to you or they're you know trying to do something and they don't have time to talk but he was really nice and he stood there and talked to me I think he was even torquing down the wheels or putting air in the tires or something and he stopped to talk to me so that was really nice of him
I really liked this Mustang GT. I believe it was an O2 and it had a big turbo. It was running nines. Just a really awesome car to see. It might have even been in the eights. But I started to like that car because I would see it every time I went and I really started to appreciate it more. And I would think about it when I was at work and stuff and I'd be like, I hope that one's there again. And it would be. It was cool to see. And the guy even daily drove it and he picked up his kids from school in it and had pictures of that. So that's pretty cool. And there were a couple of red Cobras there. One was a 99 Cobra that had the body kit to make it look like a Cobra R. Had the wing and everything on it and the front splitter and stuff. Uh, and that was a really fast car. And the guy who owns that car now has a shop in Vegas and he builds cars. And he's a really good guy to go to. So that's pretty cool to see him out there. And then uh, the other Cobra there is a red 10th anniversary Terminator. And that one I really liked seeing. And it was a really nice car. And I really wanted a 10th anniversary at the time. I didn't have the one that I have now during all this. And eventually I did get mine. But it was cool to see that one there. And he was running, uh, I don't know if it was a ported blower. I think it was a ported blower nitrous. And he was in the 10s. And it was pretty cool to see that. And so those cars aren't around anymore. Uh, the 99 Cobra was sold and the red 10th anniversary spun a bearing and that's really unfortunate. It's been down ever since. It's been quite a while now. But it's always fun to go to the track and see what shows up. You never know what you're going to find. Here's a really cool LS1 Camaro and the uh, Voodoo Racing Black Betty Cobra. That car was in the sevens. And you have My Taxi 1320, really cool guy. I've met him and talked to him, been to his house a couple times, bought some stuff from him. And uh, he was always there racing and doing a good job. And so it's fun to see these big bad Cobras down there running sevens and eights and just being really cool. And I actually have the front of this car is now on my GT because he had cut that off to do a tubular front end. But it's always fun going to the racetrack, and that was fun to take the Mach 1 down there. Perfect car to drive there and back. And I've done a ton of racing at this racetrack in the Bullet Mustang, so it was fun to go down in the car and just enjoy. Any time you can drive your car home from the track is a good time, because there was a time with the Bullet where I lost the engine and I had to sleep in the car, and it was pretty rough. So it's fun to go down there and just enjoy the races and get in a perfectly good running car, start it up, and drive home. So... Uh, that will complete this part of the story. Still a lot more to come, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more Mustang content and more Mustang stories and the stories about this car and the other cars coming up.